when you're looking at a piece of music for the first time, it's like you're looking at this beautiful, complex timestamp into the state of mind of the composer when he wrote the piece, and also the world surrounding him. What I find so fascinating about the music written during the First World War between 1914 and 1918 is that for the first time, this massive war was felt over the whole world, and it affected composers differently. Looking at how various composers deal with this and how it affected them differently is almost like musical psychoanalysis. There are a lot of layers to uncover. Erwin Schulhoff wrote a piece called Grotesken, which is a reference to the absurdity and the, the grotesqueness of the war. And there are a lot of throwbacks to Strauss and Vienna of the 1900s, but it also reveals a lot of cynicism and sarcasm. Paul Hindemith wrote In einer Nacht in 1919, and it's a real masterpiece, which at first sight seems to be a mockery of the, the schoolboy way of writing music. He makes fun of opera transcriptions. He has these odd opera tunes that he cites, and the piece finishes with this over-the-top bombastic double fugue, which takes on absurd proportions. But when you listen more closely, you can also discover this genuine, reflective stillness and his deepness in his music underneath all the satire. The piano sonata by the Belgian composer Raymond Moulard is a world premiere recording. It does not display the same openly sarcastic revolt like we see with Schulhoff and Hindemith, yet underneath the influences of Franck and Debussy we can detect an uneasiness and a nostalgia for a world that would never be the same again. The Frenchman Louis Vierne had a very tragic life. He was deeply affected by the divorce from his wife, and he lost a brother and a son on the battlefields of World War I. His leg was fractured and almost had to be amputated, so he had to relearn his organ pedal technique for a whole year. And he also was diagnosed with a glaucoma, which almost made him blind, and he had to spend time in a sanatorium, over four years actually, and he lost all his fortune and possessions because of this. Yet at the same time, he was uniformly described by his students as a kind, encouraging and patient teacher. He wrote a piece called Le Gla, and Le Gla is this funeral bell that's used during services. And you can hear this ostinato bell uh, resounding in the bass and a lot of harmonies are swerving around it. It's like a musical tomb for the fallen soldiers. <laughs> 